Hello, welcome to another installment of uh, Progress Not Perfection. This is going to be uh, a great practice canvas. I've just got the regular old 18 by 24 from BobRoss.com. So this is tinted gray, and I wanted to leave it wrapped in plastic just the way it comes from the great mothership. And I just want to show you how I'm going to prep this for practice because we did those uh, couple of tree practices on cardboard. I hope that was super helpful. I've got the camera way over to the side today just so um, my hand won't block as much of the brush. So what I'm going to do this morning, well it's morning here in the studio, is just get this ready to roll. I'm going to get us all the way to liquid white on here. And then what I thought we would do, I like to tape edges anyway, thank you Veronica, because it really does a couple of things. If I'm doing that for students in class, then they don't have to fight this top cleat of the easel or that bottom lip. Because that always gets in the way or you've got to do it with tension and then it's difficult for them to get it out, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, so taping the edges really makes them easier to transport, really frames it nicely, so if they're going to put a frame on it, it already looks matted. And boy, is it such a great reveal. Now, you do get paint typically all over your hands, so if you're going to do this and then pull the tape off, do be cautious, because as you're pulling this tape off, you'll have liquid white and hopefully some colors streaming right over the edges from whatever your masterpiece of the day was there. So you're going to have a lot of paint on here. So just be careful when you're getting it out of the easel and all. Now what I thought we would do is just divide this with a thinner tape into uh, six working areas, really. So I'm targeting somewhere around halfway. I really don't care if it's all the way. And I'm going to go roughly in thirds this way. So I'm going to have six different practice panels on one canvas. I thought that would be super helpful. Not only for you, but practice is good for me. Practice, 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 practice. Heard a great quote on a podcast. It was Tim Gilligan's Inside Out podcast. Tim is the senior pastor at Meadowbrook Church here in Ocala and an exceptional speaker and teacher. Brilliant dude. Anyway, he quoted somebody else and talking about practicing. If I don't practice for one day, I notice. If I don't practice for two days, the inner circle of people notice. And if I don't practice for three days, then the audience will know it. In my case, the audience is my students, and I don't ever want them to feel like I am not prepared or not ready for the show. Now, I don't know if you saw on the, the video I did of the zoom around the studio here, but you may have seen a whole bunch of packets of chopsticks. Well, yes, I love sushi. Um, the very best Chinese food um, is right across the street from our neighborhood. Best Chinese food I've had anywhere, certainly not just here in our local Ocala area. But uh, we've gotten to know Peter and Cindy who own, and man, own Great Wall right across the street from our neighborhood. Now they're actually neighbors. They believe they moved in a couple years ago here, just a couple streets over from us in our neighborhood too. Such wonderful people, and my goodness. Uh, I, we recommend them to absolutely everybody we know. So you can put liquid white on with really any brush you want, one or a two inch brush with these smaller panels. I'm gonna use the one inch brush just so I don't go too aggressively at the tape. So let's get this baby ready. I've got my standard old jar of uh, liquid white. I'm going to go straight in it so I get a nice, even distribution of paint. Oh, what is that? About an eighth of an inch. Probably take a touch more than that just because this is an 18 by 24. So a little over an eighth of an inch, maybe. And I'm just going to put some dots around the canvas. I'm going to tie these together with crisscross or figure eight, whatever makes sense in your head for whatever kind of strokes these are, but just you can do this quickly. You do not need to use a lot of pressure. 
And you can really see here is one of the best benefits, or there are several great benefits about how good Bob's canvases are. But look at this. You can see this is tinted gray. This is a white paint. Look how easy it is to see where I've got liquid white already. And we're just seconds into getting this baby ready. Let's get a little more paint and really get this thing done. I'm ready to do a couple practices. This video is going to need to be short. I've got a time commitment this morning. I've got to get to the other side of Ocala. So sometimes I like painting on a short timeline because it just makes me go for it. I, I, I'm as guilty of it as anybody else as far as overthinking things and Man, this is so much better if you just did begin with a thought in mind and then go for it. Boy, I am way under budgeted on, on paint this morning, so let's get some of this going. Totally fine if you put too much on. It's easy to take that off. Learned a great trick from my buddy Joe Coos. He's got great videos online. Check out painting with Coos, K-O-O-Z. I've got my brush cleaning station and my turkey baster. Mal is uh, committed to art service for just cycling through a uh, paint thinner to not be wasteful there. And boy, his tips were just fantastic. Thanks, Joe. Boy, this is taking me a lot longer than I expected. <laughs> Should have used a two inch brush, even though I've got these smaller panels. All right, let's see if we can't pick up the pace a little and Dan quit talking. I like to pull in from the outside. You're probably see, noticing that from the, the tape. You certainly can go this way, but just don't booger up the edge of your tape and don't flip paint all over your studio or whatever you've got next to your easel. And then, because you want to, you can be firm as long as you put the tape on well. Not gonna hurt the canvas. I'm not being dainty for the canvas by any means. I just don't want to flip paint all over or totally destroy my edges with that tape. That's all. All right, so we're gonna get this done. My preferred canvas size for just painting for fun is actually the 16 by 20. I've added to that the 12 by 24, that long rectangle shape. That's really cool, but my favorite is still the 16 by 20. That's a good size for me. I like to, uh, I can paint what I'm happy with in about, you know, about 30, 45 minutes on that if I'm kind of just diddling along. These uh, 18 by 24s are excellent for doing demos at different places because it's really a great size for people to watch. And just like how we used to watch Bob on PBS, it is so magical for people to see you do this large of a canvas in so short a time. If you just apply these principles and practice some, um, you will you will have great success. And man, people watching you do it, it really just kind of blows their mind. And who knows who you're going to turn on to uh, share this with? Wouldn't that be cool? You be the one responsible for sharing this incredible way of painting with somebody else. Ooh, put that on my tombstone. That'd be all right with that. Better than some other things you could have said about me in the past, that's for sure. But that's just part of the story, I guess. All right, so if you don't get enough practice putting liquid white on the canvas, just go get yourself an 18 by 24 and do what I've done here. And <laughs> this is taking... Uh, I thought this was going to be a two-minute intro. I should have had half of this done before I hit record. Sorry about that. I will ask our uh, incredible IT department if we should cut this one down a little bit. 
All right, so we're just about there. Certainly smooth enough for what we're gonna do on this practice. I'm gonna show you the trick I referred to that I learned from Coos on making sure we've got just the right distribution of paint. Cause I can, it, up, up close to it, it still looks streaky. Cause I've done it so, so fast. Probably got a little too much paint here and there and there and here. And that's okay. Here's that trick. Clean, dry, paper towel. I like to fold it up and literally wipe it on the canvas. I'm going to alternate since I painted kind of uniformly. I'm going to fold over, use a new side. So I've done top left corner, bottom right corner, bottom left, top right. And now these middle two. Hard to see on this white paper towel, but it is definitely pulling off some paint. It's also pulling off the extra that I've got there on the tape for right now. And so that is just a great way to get rid of extra little pockets or puddles because all we want is this canvas to be moist and it'll be, it'll be good and damp for hours, really. We could paint on this all day and actually that's what I'm going to need to do today. So I'm going to wipe out my brush and just finish off with some long horizontal then vertical strokes. We'll bring liquid white to a close, and when we start the video next time, we're going to practice some different ways of putting in sky. I thought we'd do some different trees, use a couple of the different brushes. Not, still not going crazy with colors. You know, I'm just going to use one or two colors here because I want to show you that you can practice. I showed you the earlier videos of the practice just on cardboard, and now I'm just showing you that you can practice you could, we could use this canvas over and over and over again and just scrape it off. Run some, run a rag across it with some good paint thinner. Yeah, it may have some tinted areas, but liquid white is so good at coverage, you could probably, once it dries, cover right over it. All right, there we go. Missed that corner just a little bit there. Maybe down there. Looking pretty good here. Let's take a peek through the old lens finder, range finder, view finder. There's liquid white. All right, see you on some practice.